I'm John Sargent and welcome to Argumental, the show where the hottest names in comedy debate the biggest issues facing mankind. Issues like, is there some way that sexism can be combined with racism to save time? <laughs> Backpack of leeks in my fridge, should I braise them or make soup? And will Scotland's oldest man ever see his 40th birthday? Here to argue such burning issues and others like them are our teams. In the red corner with Marcus Brigstock this week, it's Stephen Mangan. And joining Rufus Hand in the blue corner, please welcome Richard Herring. OK, let's start with round one, where we debate an issue so fundamental it should almost be dealt with by a more important forum than a television panel show. Good versus evil. It's the ultimate battle that's raged since the dawn of time. In the blue corner, representing evil, please welcome the Ku Klux Klan, Hitler and Jeremy Kyle. In the red corner, representing good, are nuns, pandas and children. Oh, shut up. Will there ever be a winner? These bad boys think so, but surely even they can't resist this little chap. Damn you, evil! <laughs> yes, tonight we're debating morality, but the issue I want the teams to argue about is this, that good is better than evil. <laughs> Supporting the statement on behalf of the red team, it's Marcus Brigstock. Ladies and gentlemen, good is better than evil. Of course good's better than evil. Michael Palin, Simon Cowell. Good, evil. <laughs> the Pope, Osama Bin Laden. Both evil. <laughs> We're talking about proper good, nice good, decent good. The other day I phoned some good friends to arrange a good night out. We went to see a good film, we ate some good food, we had a good laugh, I met a good looking girl, I took her home for a good seeing to. <laughs> good sex, right? Now good sex could be naughty, it could be wicked, it could be depraved, it could be quick and behind a skit near a funfair. <laughs> well I'm sorry, if your sexual encounters involve genocide, you've gone too far. <laughs> Rock and roll kind of flirts with evil. You've got people like Marilyn Manson, Ozzy Osbourne, Alice Cooper, the Jonas Brothers. Evil, you know, they project evil. But they're not really evil. They're good at what they do. They're good at pretending to be evil. If Marilyn Manson came out on stage and went, Hey, I'm Marilyn Manson. Are you ready to rock? And everyone, hey. And then he went, I killed Jill Dando. <laughs> Genuine evil. Not so good. Not good. We prefer good. It's better than evil. We have the good food guide, right? It's possible to get the evil food guide. It's the menu at Garfunkel's. <laughs> there are about 300 of us in this room. Statistically, someone in here is a sex criminal. <laughs> I've looked this up. Is it you, Richard Herring? It's not me. Is it you, Rufus Sound? Is it you, Stephen Mangan? Oh, John. <laughs> you see, we prefer good to evil. When a doctor phones you up, Right? And they say, I've got some good news, I've got some bad news. You kind of deal with it. If the doctor phoned you up and said, I've got good news and some evil news, <laughs> that wouldn't be good. <laughs> we prefer good to evil, ladies and gentlemen. Please, vote with the red team. Thank you. Thank you, Marcus. OK, next up, opposing the statement and arguing that evil is better than good, it's Richard Herring. Thank you, Marcus. Uh, uh, evil is obviously uh, better than good. You can see this just from this picture they've chosen to illustrate this, where Hitler uh, is punching Mother Teresa in her tit. Uh, <laughs> uh, where do good people live? Good, good people live there. They're hermits living in caves, praying to a god, trying to stop themselves touching themselves. <laughs> evil people are better. They live in undersea bases uh, with, with all mod cons, including uh, a laser that can destroy the world and uh, a pool full of crocodiles and a big army full of beautiful ladies in PVC costumes that you can just have sex with any time you want. That's better. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's better to be evil. Mother Teresa, she'll go to heaven, but you know, she had to spend eight years on this earth with a face like a scrotum. Is it worth it? <laughs> it's not worth it. Uh, nature intends us to be evil. We're meant to fuck, to fight, to cheat, to steal, uh, to masturbate into underwear drawers, to <laughs> set up cover video cameras in the ladies' changing rooms at the Virgin Active in Hammersmith. That is our, <laughs> that is nature that makes us do that. Uh, and I love being evil. Being evil is the best. Are you enjoying your, your water there, Marcus? Mm. I weed in that earlier. I love, <laughs> I love being evil. Are you enjoying your water there, Steve? I am, yeah. I put rehypnol in that earlier. I don't know anything about it, but are you enjoying your water there, Rufus? Yeah, very much. Arsenic in there. I don't even care you're on my team. I'm that evil. <laughs> it's fantastic. We all prefer villains. Villains are the best. Uh, Darth Vader, you know, we prefer him. He's the king of the obscene phone call. <laughs> Jesus was only fun when he was evil, when he was turning water into wine, getting pissed, when he was <laughs> hanging around with prozzies. Uh, <laughs> he was evil. The most famous is evil can evil. He was evil. He was this daredevil, devil may care attitude, flying through flaming hoops. He was pure evil. Uh, his twin brother was good can evil. No one remembers him. <laughs> he devoted his life to traffic safety. It was, it was good can evil. He put in the speed bumps. Who do you prefer? <laughs> evil can evil must win every time. We're all evil. We should celebrate evil. Evil is best. I know you're evil. Don't be scared to admit it. Vote for evil. Evil is better than good. Thank you, Richard. So, Rufus and Stephen, is there anything you'd like to say in support of your teammates? But in God versus Satan, I mean, God's not good, is he? <laughs> he's supposed to be. He sets the rules. Well, he might set the rules, but, I mean, he's not good, is he? He's not nice. The point is that everybody's given somebody evils, haven't they? Don't go give me evils. <laughs> <laughs> but all the most evil people in the world have had to have armies of evil of people behind them. So people are evil, generally. Well, well, you can have one evil guy and the rest of the people are good and just a bit confused or <laughs> bewildered. Exactly. <laughs> New Labour. <laughs> <laughs> I think God stands for good in most... It's like, if you look at it, look at the word God, it's good with nothing taken out of it. Yeah, you're, you're jiggery <laughs> Look at the word the devil. Letters it's and evil with the word D added onto it. <laughs> you can't argue with anagrams. <laughs> <laughs> proof of anything. Thank you all. So, is good better than evil? It's time for the studio audience to decide who made the best case. Hold up your red card if Marcus convinced you to believe in being good, and your blue card if, like Richard, you love Satan. <laughs> so, it's red for Marcus and blue for Richard. Vote now. <laughs> <laughs> You fool! <laughs> so, that looks like a victory for the blue team. Well done, Richard and Rufus. <laughs> They've convinced our audience that evil is better than good. Bad news for Jesus, it seems that being nailed to a cross counted for nothing. Loser. <laughs> Some say everyone has an inner evil. Not me. I'm only evil when my peppermint tea is late. Oi, dickhead, where's my tea? <laughs> our next round is called Flip Flop, where we find out how well our teams can argue with themselves. I'm going to give one member of each team a statement which they must support until they hear this sound. <coughs> At which point, they must perform a U-turn and argue against it, then flip flop back and forth every time I press the buzzer. Stephen and Rufus will play this one. Stephen, you're up first. I'd like you to start off by arguing that a dog is just for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, of course a dog is just for Christmas. They're awful. They're horrible creatures. Call me weird, but I don't want to spend every morning picking up shit in a plastic bag. <laughs> <laughs> or after my last relationship. <laughs> Sit. Dogs, they sit on your bed and they watch you having sex, uh, they, which I quite like. <laughs> I like having someone watching me having sex. Why are you doing a strange northern accent? I don't know. <laughs> Go with it. Uh, because often I'm looking at my wife and over her shoulder, my dog's watching me and he's saying, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> you're doing it wrong. And I think that's nice. Uh, because it's not, well, it's nice for you, but I, I, mean, I don't mind being watched and I'm having sex, but not by a dog, a cat 
or a mongoose or something is fine. <laughs> and dogs, they, they, they need walking all the time. That's all they do is they want to walk. And you walk them one day, anything that'll do for a few months, and they know the next day, up they get, <laughs> please take me out walking. So you get the lead, you walk. Can't they learn to drive a car? <laughs> <laughs> because uh, who needs to walk when you can fly with dogs? You're doing the northern voice again. <laughs> And when we walk, we breathe in air, and they take us outside, and it's beautiful, and you feel that life can't get any better. And it can get better when you shove its little face into a drain. With a <laughs> That's when life gets better. And dogs, they eat this food that smells revolting. I mean, well, it smells revolting, but it tastes wonderful. <laughs> Have you ever had... Uh, they do one with pork in a, in a dog gravy. It's lovely. And you have some peas with it. And the other thing I've noticed, dog poo, it makes people go blind. Now, you may think that's a bad thing, but it's not really, because dogs are employed as guides for the blind. <laughs> so they create their own employment. They're very smart dogs. They're much smarter than you or me. Oh. Thank you, Stephen. Well, flip flop. The most popular breed of dog in Korea is the Pekingese, partly because of its personality, but also they're just the right size for the microwave. <laughs> the best thing about a dog is putting your money on the one that manages to get out of the skip alive. <laughs> Rufus and Richard, what do you make of Stevens's performance? I agreed with Northern Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I found Southern Steve slightly hypocritical. Well, it's interesting that within you, you've got this effete Northern... I know, it's quite, quite, quite that... camp, wasn't he? It's but I liked him more. He's a nice... You should go be him Should I be time. him? Yeah. Okay, from now on, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be the Northern one. Yeah. <laughs> it's like when you talk in your normal voice, it's you from now, <laughs> and when you talk in the Northern voice, it's like a showbiz you from the 80s. <laughs> OK, Rufus, you're up next. I'd like you to begin by arguing that the tabloid press is a national treasure. <laughs> the tabloid press is a national treasure. Uh, it's, it's a bag of shit. For the, <laughs> it's, uh, the Sun claims to have three million... Joe, I was going to say the word readers there. That's not quite right, is it? <laughs> Lookers? Uh, <laughs> pointers. Uh, it is a national treasure, uh, the tabloid press. I don't know if anybody's seen Raiders of the Lost Ark, uh, but that's what happened when Indy and the Nazis looked for treasure. Basically, it whipped out and turned them all into zombies. Uh, uh, which is not the same as the sun. Uh, it is the same as the sun. <laughs> <laughs> It, the tabloid press is not a national treasure. Uh, we know this because another name for the tabloid press is the gutter press. And let's be honest, what good comes out of a gutter? Uh, uh. <laughs> Conkers. <laughs> Smells of our childhood. Gutters are an excellent place to be. Uh. Uh. Have you noticed that the sun drops page three when they think the story is serious enough to warrant not showing tits? Like, if it's 9-11, no tits that day, no tits for 9-11. If it's just, like, an earthquake in China, bit of tits for that. That's, that's why I wonder, there must be somebody employed at the Sun whose job it is to work out the magnanimity of the news to tits ratio. <laughs> that's the go to Lorraine 11 from Romford, who then says, I quite like an earthquake. <laughs> Uh, I mean, who wants to get their news as well, like the Daily Sport? What are you really going to learn from the Daily Sport? Uh, I learned that I can get three erections in a single lunch. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Rufus. Right or wrong, the tabloids do have their knockers, which is the only reason I buy them. <laughs> Marcus and Steve, what did you make of Rufus's performance? Well, very good. Very tremendous. I yep. used the one voice, yeah, which I know really, that that was a a it will mark it that down. You're going to come in with maybe three or four different <laughs> personas. <laughs> <laughs> I like the sun. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> OK, time for the studio audience to decide who flipped and who flopped. If you thought Stephen flip-flopped best about dogs at Christmas, then vote red. But if you thought Rufus flip-flopped best about the tabloids, then clear the front page and vote blue. So, it's red cards for Stephen or blue cards for Rufus. Vote now. So, a red majority there. Commiserations to Rufus, but congratulations to Stephen. <laughs> 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 
Join us after the break when we'll be finding out whether Britain's kids are fat enough and if Kate Middleton should get out while she can. Don't go away. <laughs> Welcome back to Argumental, a show that's a bigger dust-up than Krakatoa. And I should know, I was there. <laughs> right, next up is Slideshow. <laughs> One member of each team will again be debating a controversial issue, but this time I want them to illustrate their argument using a series of pictures which they've never seen before. Richard and Marcus, you're up for this one. Richard, I'd like you to start by arguing that Brit kids are not fat enough. <laughs> Here's your first picture. Thank you very much. Uh, British children are definitely not fat enough. The Britain has never had a sumo world champion. <laughs> the world record for fattest adult. Every year that goes to the USA, we've got to start training kids up for these things. Uh, or we could send them out. Uh, too many kids are doing uh, exercise. Uh, children are being sent out uh, digging the roads now. It's, we've gone back to Victorian times. We need a Lord of the Flies situation. There'll be one fat kid he'll get picked on. Uh, and there he is. That's the very kid. Imagine him on a desert island, <laughs> surrounded by lean British children. They're just going to beat the shit out of him and eat him up. <laughs> Make them put their pants on. That's... Give them some human dignity. But aside from that, uh, and that is, that is the, the current American, the fattest child in America. Uh, <laughs> one in five children uh, in this country eat no fruit at all, you know. I think that figure is just simply not high enough. That's just 20%. <laughs> I think we can do, we get children, instead of eating an orange, kids eat a chocolate orange. Instead of eating a pear, eat a pear of chocolate oranges. Uh, <laughs> instead of eating a pineapple, eat a ham and pineapple pizza, but take the pineapple off and put some segments of chocolate orange on it. But uh, <laughs> then you can end up looking like this guy. Uh, and we need more people to die, that is the truth. There's too many people in this world. Uh, and if they all eat those big pile of donuts everywhere they go, uh, then we can kill people at an early age. People will die in their 20s and 30s, uh, and there'll be enough room for everyone else. So encourage your children to eat more. Uh, the children of Great Britain are simply not fat enough. <laughs> Thanks, Richard. Marcus, I'd like you to argue the opposite, that Brit kids are too fat. Here's your first picture. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, British children are too fat. I know the misery of being a fat child. I was a massively fat child. Huge. So fat, I had to become a goth. <laughs> I had no choice. It was the only way I could explain why people were looking at me. Oh, it's because I'm a goth. No, it's because I was spherical. <laughs> But listen, ladies and gentlemen, British children are too fat. And this next picture is going to show you exactly what I mean. Uh. Yes. <laughs> when I see the state of Britain's children, I am bricking it, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Absolutely bricking it. They are like a ton of bricks. Brick shit house. Bricky brick, 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 brick. Uh. <laughs> Margaret Thatcher, Milky Snatcher. There's no saving her. Let's save our children from being too fat, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Look at this lovely, happy, thin child there. You know why he's doing that? He's doing that for two reasons. One, he's happy and thin. Two, he's just punched Margaret Thatcher in her face. <laughs> Bosh! Now I'm going snorkelling! Just one of the fun activities you can take part in if you're a reasonably sized child. Some British children are so fat they have crackling. <laughs> A child the other day getting off a bus, right, and he had to get off backwards because he was so fat, and because he was going backwards, a siren came on going beep, beep, beep. <laughs> this fat child is reversing. That is bananas. Vote red. <laughs> Thanks, Marcus, Stephen, and Rufus. Would either of you like to pitch anything into this debate? Yeah, I think kids definitely too fat. I can only get two of them in the boot of my car. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. And they never tell you they're fat on internet chat rooms, do they? Never. <laughs> this is not that's why I signed up That's the reason why we have to get children uh, fat, because uh, there are a lot of sexual predators. We have to make our children un so unattractive. <laughs> <laughs> you said that you were so fat your only choice was to become a goth. Yes. Surely if you were that fat, your second choice was to become a bouncy castle. <laughs> <laughs> Briggs coming round! Because, <laughs> because I was already a goth and no one wants to go on a goth bouncy castle. <laughs> yeah, sure. Bounce on me. Hang on. Are you, are you saying nobody wants to go on a gothic bouncy and castle? Gothic bouncy. <laughs> of course everybody wants to go on a gothic bouncy <laughs> castle. Yeah. Look at the minarets. <laughs> Twang. <laughs> gothic 
<laughs> bouncy castle, but not a bouncy castle that is a goth. <laughs> Thanks very much. Thank you. So, are Brit kids fat enough? It's time for our studio audience to decide who made the best case. It's a red card for Marcus, who thinks they are, and a blue one for Richard, who thinks they're not. Vote now. Oh. A clear victory for the Reds. Well done, Marcus. <laughs> You've convinced the audience that Brit kids are too fat. One in six children are clinically obese by the time they reach primary school. And a bit out of breath. <laughs> It's on to our popular culture round now, where tonight's debate is all about princely paramour, Kate Middleton. We all know that a royal engagement can end in disaster, but Will's most recent love affair seems to have been on and off more times than a paparazzi's flash. Will's always been a hit with the ladies, though, so Kate better keep up the dutiful girlfriend act if she plans on being a princess. Whether Kate will get her fairy tale ending or a life sentence remains to be seen. But at least the commemorative crockery is ready. Pass the super glue. <laughs> you saw her there, but the statement I want you to argue is this Kate Middleton should get out while she can. First up, it's Rufus. Is there not a part of all British people that feel slightly sorry for the modern royals? You want to be queen, Miss Middleton? Well, you should know this. Being queen is cocking awful. And, uh, Kate, if you're watching this, I can't let that happen to you. Beautiful Kate. Sensitive Kate. Kate, with your beautiful hair and love of Duran Duran. If you're watching this, I urge you, come, Kate, run away with me. Together we can build a new life in the woods. I'll chop logs, catch rabbits and smell of rich pine and mosses. You can talk about art history and your parents' party planning business and we'll laugh and you can put this whole sorry royal business behind you. We'll drink fine scotch whiskey and play Baccarat to Burt Baccarat. <laughs> I'll bring you furs on which you can lie and laugh and drink and laugh and talk and laugh and make sweet, sweet love and laugh. Because <laughs> you know, Kate, a man doesn't need a crown to be a king. Although, in fairness, that does help. I suppose what I'm getting at here, Kate, is that together we could have paradise. But with William, you're always just going to be some chick that better stay on the right side of Prince Philip. <laughs> it's your call. It is, however, the reason that Kate Middleton should get out while she can and why I urge you to vote blue. Thank you. Well done. Next up, opposing Rufus and arguing that Kate Middleton should not get out while she can, it's Stephen. Kate, do not get out while you can. I love the royal family and I love the Queen. I love the Queen in a, in a loyal subject way, in a, in a patriotic way, but also in a kind of take that crown off and get over here, you dirty bitch kind of a way. <laughs> and I know that one day I could feel the same way about Kate here. She's just got to stick with it. I mean, why should she get out? William's not that bad looking. You know, he looks just enough like his mum, to stop her retching during sex. Uh, <laughs> you can imagine how she could lord it over everyone at the school reunion, you know. What are you up to, Kate? Well, I'm just dating the heir to the throne. Tell me more about your job at Aldi. You know? <laughs> she should not get out. As a mere commoner, she'd never be able to afford the 90 quid for a packet of Duchy of Cornwall sausages. Whereas now, inside the royal fold, she can get them off the Prince of Wales for nothing. <laughs> Send us a hamper of pork products, Charlie boy, or I'll tell Camilla you kissed me and touched my boob and then peed on me, <laughs> saying, say my title, say my title. <laughs> Arise. <laughs> now that Di's gone, we need someone who looks vaguely normal to look at. Who have we got now? We've got Prince Chase Me, I'm a Showgirl, Edward. <laughs> Prince Charles is so battered, he looks like a taxi with the back doors open. And Princess Anne has a set of teeth that could eat an apple through a tennis racket. <laughs> we have to look at this genetic backwash on a daily basis. Kate must stay and inject a bit of chin into the royal family. Come on, Kate. Don't let us down. Stick with it. This country needs you. Vote for the Reds. Thanks, 
Stephen, Marcus and Richard, would you like to add anything in support of your teammates? Stephen, you had me at sausages. Thank you. <laughs> Beautiful. Delicious. They lose a few along the way of these. It's a dangerous position to be in. I don't know if it's worth the risk of death. But she seems all right. I'd only kill it. her because if I got on top of her, that's the only way out. <laughs> <laughs> Crash into death. Kate Middleton died today. <laughs> <laughs> Under Richard Herring. <laughs> It'd be worth it, though, by the way. <laughs> it's not good to be the first, one of the first couple, though. That's the, that's the, the law, I think you realise. So she should wait. Why not be like William's first love and then wait till he has a wife and she dies? <laughs> um, <laughs> and then he can go back to Kate and have a happy time. That's the traditional royal way. <laughs> Thank you all. So, should Kate Middleton get out while she can? Once again, the studio audience will decide who made the best case. It's a blue card for Rufus and Richard, who think Kate should make her escape, and a red one for Stephen and Marcus, who think she'll go on to be a credit to the royals, like Queen Latifah. Vote now. It's pronounced Latifah. <laughs> so, it looks like a win for the Reds. Well done, Stephen and Marcus. They've convinced the audience that Kate Middleton should not get out while she can. Kate Middleton has that girl-next-door quality, which in my experience means she sometimes forgets to close her bedroom curtains when she changes out of her work clothes. <laughs> At the end of that round, the red team are ahead. <laughs> Time now for the final round and a last chance for our teams to show just how argumental they really are. I'm going to show them a series of images. All they have to do is suggest what argument the picture is proving. OK, teams, here's your first one. <laughs> it's an argument that, as you get older, you can be as fit as you like, but the mind is still going, and occasionally you will forget the other glove. <laughs> <laughs> it's an argument that it's never too soon to start betting on Team Britain for 2012. <laughs> Next picture. Is this an argument that uh, you should be very careful before applying to be the toilet attendant at Elton John's house? <laughs> <laughs> it's an argument against the tempting synchronised swimming in less than one inch of water. <laughs> and make sure it's water as well. Next one. <laughs> this is an argument for being very, very specific when you say, let's order a Chinese. <laughs> It's an argument that in the East, sat-navs are a little more low-tech. <laughs> so I left when I scream. <laughs> it's an argument of what would happen if chickens ruled the Earth. <laughs> <laughs> OK, that's it. So, for the final time, it's down to our studio audience to decide who made the best case. Red for Marcus and Stephen, and blue for Rufus and Richard. Vote now. So I can tell you that the blue team have won the round, but nevertheless, that still means the overall winners tonight are the red team. Well done, Marcus Brickstock and Stephen Mangan. Commiserations to Rufus Hound and Richard Herring. That's all we've got time for. Good night. The Fog on the Tide, all mine, all mine, as the song goes. And this Sunday night at 10, that's where we are. Titan side for brand new Dave's one-night stand. Next, though, it's Mock the Week. <laughs>